Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and the video you're about to check out is an excerpt from one of my online Skin On Frame boat building courses. So if you like what you see here and you want to learn more about Skin On Frame, check out our website where I've got a bunch more free Skin On Frame classes. And if you want to go even deeper, you can check out some of our paid courses as well, where I share everything that I've learned over the last 20 years being a full-time Skin On Frame boat builder so you can skip the learning curve and have a successful first Skin On Frame build. All right, enjoy the video. So if you want to use an action camera to film yourself from the back deck of your Skin On Frame kayak, you've got a couple different options. You can just screw the mount down to either the deck beams directly behind the cockpit, but I've found that doesn't usually result in a very good filming vantage. The deck beam that's a little bit closer to you is gonna bring the camera too close and your body's gonna fill up the whole frame, and the deck beam that's a little bit farther from you is gonna be out of reach so you can't move the camera and you can't turn it on and off while you're on the water. So the way that I like to do this is I just glue a block of wood to the inside of the gunnel at exactly the right location for me to be able to reach back, turn the camera on and off, and also be able to move it around a little bit here. All right, so before we get into this, I just want to mention that if you're building either one of my traditional Greenland kayak designs, there's a good chance that one of these deck beams behind the cockpit is going to be in the correct location for your action camera mount, in which case you can just use this as your mounting surface. So for me personally, I am 5'8 inches tall, and I find that 26 inches behind the cockpit is about the right location for my action camera mount. And you can see that on this West Greenland kayak right here, this deck beam is at 26 inches. Now, if you were a smaller person, there's a chance you'd be in a smaller scale of this kayak, which would bring this deck beam a little bit forward, but it would also be a good location for your arm reach. And if you were a larger person, there's a chance you'd be in a larger scale of this kayak, which would bring this deck beam a little further back, which would also be good for your arm reach. So if you're building either of my Greenland kayaks, I would just use this particular deck beam as your mounting surface. Although, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna to have to make yourself a little block of wood here that is however thick it needs to be to bring this deck beam up to the height of the skin. And I would glue this down just like this, and then after the skin is on the kayak, you can come back with this size B one inch diamond plate ram mount ball, and this can be your action camera mount. Now, just incidentally here, I always mount my cameras off to one side or the other of the gunnel, usually on the side with my dominant arm because it's gonna make it a lot easier to reach back and manipulate the camera, and you're usually gonna get much better shots this way. And I like these little diamond plate balls here because it's a really minimalist solution that doesn't require a lot of extra framing, and I feel like these give you plenty of strength for this attachment. The only time I wouldn't use one of these if I was doing really aggressive surf kayaking with a long arm camera mount. So this is a pretty secure little attachment. All right, so now let's talk about what to do if you're building one of my modern kayaks where this deck beam is not in the correct location. In this case, I'm gonna make myself a little mounting block here and I'm just gonna glue it to the inside of the gunnel. So taking a look at this piece of wood, the top surface of this is an inch and an eighth wide, although I could make an argument for going inch and a quarter, but I wouldn't go any wider than that. It's an inch and three quarter tall, and it is three and a half inches long. And that three and a half inch measurement is pretty important because if you go much shorter than that, you're not gonna have enough surface to mount the top of your action camera mount. And if you go much longer than that, the concavity of the gunnel surface here means that you're not gonna get good gluing in the center. Now, something else I wanna point out is you can see how this is cut at a bevel here, and the way that I build these is I set my table saw at an angle and I run a much longer piece of wood through the saw. You never wanna take a tiny piece of wood and try to run it through a table saw or a chop saw because that's a really great way to get a serious injury. And so if you don't have the ability to make an angled cut safely, what I would recommend doing is just gluing a square block of wood one and an eighth inches wide in this location. And then you can come back in with your block plane and you could shave that down to the right angle. And you can come in here with a chisel and just kind of round off the bottom edges. And that's another thing that's really important about this block. You wanna make sure that all these edges are rounded because keep in mind, your float bags are gonna be sliding back and forth across these edges here. And you wanna make sure that you're not slowly damaging your float bags with the edges of your action camera mount block. So when it comes time to actually glue this on, 
First thing you want to do is just check to make sure it's in the right location. And the best way to do this is just to drop the kayak frame down onto the floor, put the sitting mat in and get into the frame so you can reach back and you can check the distance to operate the camera. Now, everybody's gonna have a little bit different preferences for the type of shot that they're looking for, but what I've found is that if I put this far enough back to where I can just barely turn the camera on and off, that ends up being just about the right framing for me. Now, I'll go over this again when we get to the skinned kayak, but this is the ram mount long arm attachment. And the reason I like this is because it gets the camera up a little bit higher for a little bit better vantage without being so long that it's really vulnerable to getting damaged. And if you purchase all these pieces before you decide on your mounting location, you can actually set this up and do some test shots before you glue the block on the boat or before you make a firm commitment to putting it on a deck beam for a Greenland kayak. Now, in the case of the Greenland kayak, even if this isn't exactly in the right place, the nice thing about this long arm is that there's enough movement here that you can move the camera forward and back about four inches while still keeping the camera at roughly the same height here. So anyways, one last thing, while you're taking test shots, remember that most of these cameras have several different fields of view. And for me personally on this GoPro Hero 8 Black, I'm usually shooting in linear mode for a little bit more of an intimate shot, although that does still give me the option to come out to wide view or even super view if I wanna let more of the background in. So once I've actually figured out where I want this action camera mount, I'll just make a mark across the top of the block onto the gunnel as a reference mark and then I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna glue this. Now, if I'm working on one of my modern kayaks and I haven't cleaned up the frame already, I'm gonna push this a 16th of an inch down from the top edge of the gunnel because after this is glued on, I'm gonna come back with a block plane and as I put a slight chamfer onto the top edge of that gunnel, that's going to come down to the height of this surface right here and it's just gonna give me a really nice mounting surface and the skin is gonna seal perfectly to the top of this block. Now, if for whatever reason you've already done that step and you've chamfered off the top of your gunnels a little bit, or you happen to be putting this style of block on a Greenland kayak, which has flattened gunnels already, in that case, you do want to mount this flush with the top surface of the gunnels right here. So once I figured that out, I'm just going to come in here and mark all the way around the block, just like this. And the reason I'm doing this is because that lets me come in with some masking tape and I can mask off these surfaces because if I'm doing this with Gorilla Glue, it ends up being kind of messy and it's really hard to get in here with a chisel and clean out the glue squeeze out. So by masking it off, then you can go ahead and glue this block in place and then you can come back an hour later after that Gorilla Glue has squeezed out, you can peel your tape and you've got a nice clean surface and minimal cleanup. Now, the only frustrating thing you're gonna find is that when you're trying to actually glue this onto the gunnel, because it's at an angle and the glue is slippery, it's gonna to wanna to slide around on you. And just to give you a quick example of how I did this last time I glued one of these on, I put a couple spring clamps down here and I put a bigger clamp up here and that worked out for me. But if this gets too frustrating and you can't get it to stay stuck in place, one last option for you is you could just grab the block, take it off the gunnel and run a couple of eighth inch pilot holes through it. And then you could screw it right into the gunnel as a clamping pressure. And then once the glue is dried, you can pull your screws back out. All right, so fast forwarding a couple days here, the kayak is now skinned and coated. And if I take a flashlight and hold it underneath here, you can see really clearly the outline of this mounting block that we added that is now glued to the skin with the coating that we applied to the fabric. And so at this point, all we really gotta do is just locate our ball mount here and we can mark it. I've already gone ahead and marked the hole spacing. Then you can come in here and pile it. And then I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and screw this down with a couple of one inch number eight stainless steel pan head screws. Now, as long as you don't oversize your pilot hole, I really don't think it's necessary to apply any sealant. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this right here and go ahead and drive these screws in.
I think one inch long fasteners are probably sufficient here. You could go as much as inch and a quarter, but anything more than that is gonna be overkill. And that's our installation. So how all this ultimately comes together is I've got my action cam with the standard quarter 20 mount. I've got this Ram ball mount. This is the size B, that's a one inch ball size. I'm gonna go ahead and screw this into here, just like this. And then I'm gonna grab the Ram long arm attachment. Now, personally, I really prefer shooting with the medium arm attachment for anything from the front deck, but from the back deck here, I find the long arm gives me a much nicer perspective. This has a spring in it, and the way that I like to set this up is with the spring towards the bottom of the arm. And then I squeeze it like this, I drop the ball in, and then I put it over the other ball, and then you could tighten this down from the side. And once again, the reason that I really love this particular setup in this exact location is because it is just close enough that I can reach back to manipulate the camera, but it's far enough away that it gives me a good view of my whole paddling stroke. And just by changing the field of view setting on the camera, I can get even wider than that if I'm out paddling with friends. And then also, there's a really wide range of motion right here. If I wanna get even further back, I can do this, which on a wide angle lens actually makes a surprising amount of difference, but I can still barely reach this button. If I wanna get even closer for a little more intimate shot, I can come forward. And then also, if I turn this sideways, I can get over here for a center line shot, or I can come all the way out here for an oblique shot. And then one last thing to mention here is that this long arm attachment can develop a lot of leverage on this base plate here. And what that means is that if you're filming from this vantage here, you need to be really mindful of your surroundings. So if you come up against a dock or if you're practicing rescues or if you're playing in the surf, you don't accidentally hit this hard enough to damage your kayak. And Personally, that's one of the reasons I tend to not put in really big oversized fasteners because I would rather have this whole thing rip out than end up damaging my gunnel right here. And if you're worried about losing your action camera in that kind of a situation, you can always run a short lanyard down to your perimeter line right here. You just wanna make sure that you keep that as short as possible. So if the worst does happen, it doesn't end up becoming an entanglement hazard. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for this video. Once again, this was an excerpt from one of my online skin on frame boat building courses. So if you like what you saw here and you're interested in skin on frame building, think about checking out our website, capefalconkayaks.com, where I've got a bunch more skin on frame building video courses, plan sets, and various free skin on frame resources. You can find us on Instagram, at Cape Falcon Builds, where we post a daily build blog of everything we're working on in the shop. And just like I say every time, even if you're not normally a social media person, I would really encourage you to check out the Instagram feed because there is so much more cool stuff there than ever shows up on the YouTube channel and sometimes not even in my paid classes. Okay, take care, be safe on the water, have fun building your skin boat.